Hey, everybody. It's Eric Green. Thank you for joining me on this week's Tax Rep uh, Network podcast. Um, I'm calling this bulletproofing your return, okay? And, you know, what, what I want to tell everybody about, all right, is, I'm, first of all, I'm thrilled to be joined with this week's podcast um, guest, all right, Damien Greathead of Receipt Bank. Damien is Receipt Bank's Vice President for Global Accountants Programs and someone I work very closely with, both in my own practice, but also teaching accountants about documentation and IRS exams, right? Receipt Bank, it, it, if you've never seen this before, and I'm going to tell you the story how Damien and I found each other in a minute. But if you haven't seen this before, it's an application. Literally, it's an app on my iPhone. Um, it, literally, it allows you to literally take a photograph of your receipt. And so if I'm out with um, clients tonight or when I'm at AICPA next week, I, I take a photo of the receipt. All right. That will literally go right into our accounting software. We happen to use, you know, QuickBooks and, and it's there and it's there. And so is the image. All right. And that is why as a civil criminal tax guy, I'm so excited about this. All right. Um, and so the reason I say bulletproof your return is that now you have that image forever. So if the paper fades, it burns, it gets washed away, it's out floating in Long Island Sound, which, by the way, I've had happen, um, you don't have to worry about it. It's there forever. And as long as you've backed up your software, and most people today are moving to QuickBooks Online, as long as it's backed up, that's, that, that is audit proof. That is, from an audit perspective, it is as it is bulletproof as it gets. So, Damien, with that as kind of our diving into, as our intro to get into this, Thanks for doing this. I, I appreciate your coming on the program. I know you're crazy busy. I, I'm going to be seeing you in the next few weeks at the, at the conferences, uh, but thanks for taking the time. Absolute pleasure, Eric. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So b before we start, I wanted to just, as I mentioned, tell the listeners how you and I actually met. All right. A a and by the way, th if you've listened to the podcast, you've heard this story before, but this is the story that led to my finding Receipt Bank and Damien. So, um, I get a client that comes in, uh, has been chosen for audit, right? Not a big deal. Go get me your records. He, and, and he himself is an attorney. He said, that's kind of the problem. I'm like, oh, here we go. You don't have receipts. He said, well, we had everything. He said, so what happens is we live in an apartment building. There's a fire in the apartment below us. And I'm like, okay. And he said, so what happens is the fire suppression system, right? The water sprinkler system comes on. No big deal, right? Puts out the fire. We're all great. Now, if you've never dealt with a fire before, just as an aside, generally what happens is the fire does a little bit of damage and then the water does the rest of it, all right? I mean, when the firemen come in with the hoses or the suppression system goes on, these are designed to just flood out the fire. And it does a very effective job as well as destroying everything else. And so what happened is when the suppression system came on, the water is now pouring into the storage unit below that apartment, which is where their stuff is. So they have photographs of just literally what looks like paper mache because they don't even think about it, right? The fire's below. They're told it's all, it's okay. The fire department's there. Fire is out. So it's several days later that they go down and, it's literally soaking in, in, in a lake of water. So he told me that the receipts aren't even receipts. They're not, only, not only are they not even legible, it's like not even paper. It's like dissolved into this goo. And so he has photos of this, but we have no records. So, of course, in comes forensic accountant. Dawn comes in, and she is now working with them to reconstruct all this. But I, I'm there one day in our conference room while she's showing him – this app, you take the picture, it goes right into QuickBooks. I'm like, what is that? She said, Receipt Bank. I, I will have to check that out. Now, as most of you also know, I'm a little busy, right? Out of sight, out of mind. So now, sure enough, I'm at Scaling New Heights, where I will be speaking in two weeks, and Damien, you'll be there as well. Um, so I'm speaking there, and um, I'm somebody who I never went, and I've mentioned this on a number of podcasts, I never go to the, the exhibiting hall, right? I'm a lawyer. I'm a tax lawyer. I'm too busy. I'm billing by the hour. I get up in the morning, have my coffee, go get my workout in, go give my talk, go back to my room and keep billing. That's what I do. It's what I've always done. Dawn, almost in a headlock, grabs me and is dragging me into the exhibiting hall, over to this booth, bright and orange, very hard to miss, 
receipt bank. And she's like, this, these are the guys I was telling you about when we were talking about with our client, whatever his name is. And, and I, I'm intrigued by this. So I photograph and it's there. I go back and I mentioned it to our controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, nothing happens. Six months later now, I see Damien at NATP. And I'm like, you know what? I got to do that. Now I text my controller. Why haven't we been set up on this? And so I tell Damien, Damien, you force the issue, right? You send it to Susan. Susan, here's what Eric wanted. Mm -hmm. Run with it. And, and, and it's been a little bit of a struggle getting my partners all to get on board with this. Oh, it's another app. I got to take a photo. We're loving it, right? We're loving it. And mostly because I feel better knowing, having, having been through this with clients, we've got all this, all right? And so that is how I ended up connecting with you. And after we were using it, I finally said, you know, I got to get you on the podcast, whatever. Um, and for, for dis disclosure, Receipt Bank, I think about a month and a half ago, now is sponsoring this podcast. But I wanted everyone to know that that's the order it happened in. It wasn't Receipt Bank showed up and said, we'll throw money at you if you'll tell everyone you like us. That did not happen. If you go listen to Fight Against Fraud, that podcast with Dawn, she will tell you the same thing. That is the way the story went down. All right? I found it with this, where the, where the stuff turns into mush. It is unbelievable. And so, Damien, I, I, with that as our background, all right, um, how did you, meaning you, Damien, get into this? I mean, because, you know, I'm always fascinated by those people who worked at accounting firms or in accounting, you know, the, 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 that area wind up in the software end of things. So if you don't mind, can you kind of walk us through how you got to where you are? Yeah, absolutely, Eric. And then again, thank you so much for having me on for today's podcast. So basically, I, I've been with Receipt Bank for about five years now, but, but prior to that, I actually worked in an accounting firm. Um, it was, uh, as you can probably tell from the, the accent, it was in Northern California, <laughs> uh, just, over, just over the bridge uh, north of San Francisco. And um, what we found is, uh, I, I came at fr from it from the, the bookkeeping standpoint. We, we used to outsource a lot of the bookkeeping to bookkeepers in the area uh, because we couldn't do bookkeeping cost effectively. Um, it was, uh, there's a lot of paper involved. There's a lot of chasing of records. There's a lot of queries going back and forth because we don't have the source documents. So we, in our accounting firm, we couldn't deliver bookkeeping services cost effectively. Uh, and so what we found uh, about eight years ago, nine years ago was uh, these cloud tools coming onto the, uh, onto the scene and, and they were uh, QuickBooks Online, Zero. Uh, they were the two main ones in that general ledger uh, space. Uh, what we recognize is that if we wanted to be the trusted advisor to our clients, then we better kick the tires ourselves. So we actually, um, we, we put our own entity, uh, we took it off desktop, put it on to uh, zero uh, in this instance. And, and we started to see some of the, the time savings uh, come, come to fruition. But it wasn't until uh, I was introduced to Receipt Bank uh, that we started to see uh, significant time savings. Uh, and what we were doing is we were snapping pictures of the receipts, of the bills, of the credit notes, the check images, or everything associated with our accounting function. And once we'd done that, what, uh, what took place then was the machines started to recognize everything. So optical character recognition, could recognize the date, could recognize the amount, could recognize the, uh, uh, the, the supplier. The machine learning got to work because it remembered how we dealt with AT&T last time. It remembered how we dealt with Staples last time. And it started to automate more and more of the keeping data entry, those routine mundane things. Uh, but most importantly, um, it now filed everything so that we could easily search filter and download. So uh, if we ever had to go back to meals and entertainment between uh, uh, in October 2016, we could easily filter all of the receipts, all of the source documents for, for that very specific uh, supplier, category, date, amount. Uh, it, it basically uh, eliminated all of the time associated with collecting documents, um, organizing them, uh, and also the data entry, getting all that information into the general ledger. So in our accounting firm, uh, we eliminated about 50% of the time associated with our entity's bookkeeping. Um, and what we realized is that we could actually go out to our clients and offer bookkeeping services, 
with this technology. So we started to, to ramp up the bookkeeping side of things when typically we couldn't, uh, we couldn't do that work. Uh, what was the other interesting thing was we were able to recruit uh, clients, attract clients from outside our traditional 50 mile radius. Uh, we started to develop uh, niches ar around dental practices and veterinarian clinics because we were able to roll out this technology across more and more of them. So that was my background. It was, it was a light bulb moment for us to say that we didn't have to rely on once a year tax and consulting work, but instead we could do more regular recurring work, uh, such as bookkeeping, which led to much cleaner uh, tax work, uh, much cleaner compliance work. And then the, the, the other side of things was just the document management. The, um, uh, we, we <laughs> ridiculously, we had uh, um, storage space uh, a couple of miles up the road and, and every, at the end of every tax season, we'd head up there with another year's worth of paperwork. Uh, but what we were able to do is we were able to take our entire tax practice, our bookkeeping practice paperless uh, because of this technology. <laughs> Uh, and that was huge. It's unbelievable. Well, isn't it unbelievable? Like, like the the um, I, I think was it OC the the ability to read, um, off of the images has has gotten so much better. I remember when the first business card scanners came out, right? Yeah. The apps, yeah. and you would do it. You take a photo, and it wouldn't read anything, right? It was all just gobbledygook. <laughs> so by the time you finish read time again, at some point you're like, this is stupid. I could read. I could input the stuff myself faster. It's gotten so good now. The ability for, I mean, checks, uh, anything. Yeah. Uh, and, and what I find amazing, you used to bring boxes, boxes, truckloads of paper up. And at some point, you don't even have to go anymore, right? The whole thing's on a thumb drive and you've uploaded it to the cloud. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we used to call uh, OCR, we used to call it occasional character recognition. But now where uh, we can handle, um, we're handling millions and millions of documents every month all different types, the AT&T bill, the American Airlines receipt, the Starbucks receipt. Uh, and, and again, it used to take um, three hours, six hours, half a day, a day to process a, a, a banker's box full of, uh, full of documents. But now we're getting that processed within 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, uh, even down to 90 seconds uh, for individual items. So the processing speed and the accuracy uh, that's what's really come uh, ahead in leaps and bounds in recent years. Now, so, and, and describe to people who've never used it, what Receipt Bank, I mean, you've hit on a bunch of things. Describe what Receipt Bank does because, you, well, let me put it this way. You mentioned the recurring, and that to me is really the brilliant, I mean, because it remembers, right? So Eric Green takes clients to um, the Cast Iron Chef, which is the restaurant that's next to our building, right? So we tend to go there because I can walk there. I can take that, it goes right into Meals and Entertainment. Bam, it, it, it's odd because it's, it's seen it before and it does it. When I go out to Vegas, <laughs> that's not gonna be terribly of much help because it'll have all these restaurants that I normally don't go to. But, um, ah, but, 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 but we thing, have- The good thing, Eric, is we've, we've probably seen a couple of those restaurants before. We'll recognize what the receipt looks like. Ah. We'll, we'll, we'll have an attempt. So the, the, the key thing here is we do the preparation of the, the, the data. It, it's still really important for the accountants and the tax professionals to review that data, to, to correct the machines if we got it wrong. Uh, but if we see restaurants somewhere, we're going to put that to meals and entertainment because tens of thousands of other um, other accountants have uh, applied a restaurant to meals and entertainment. So we start to learn and we start to um, anticipate, but it, it's up to the, the, the tax professional's role now is to review and confirm before they send it over to the general ledger, if that makes sense. Uh, that I did not realize that. So I have a dinner plan Monday night with a few of the other speakers. We're going to go to craft steak, right? They're right at the MGM. Mm -hmm. Um, when I go and I take the photo of that, because we are picking up the tab, I, when I take that photo, you've probably seen craft steak before. Correct. And so that will go right, aha, I, see, I just learned something. Um, so uh, describe, if you can, to the listeners who have not seen this before, how it actually works. Yeah, so let's think about it in the simplest form. Um, let's just say where, and, and this is, could be at a restaurant, but let's say we've, uh, we've hit up the Home Depot. Uh, we've gone to Home Depot to pick up some supplies for a job for, for a client or a customer that we're working on. So we get that big paper receipt uh, and typically that goes back into the, the truck, goes into the wallet, maybe never sees the light of day again. Comes out two weeks later, 
and more likely you won't actually be able to see much of the detail on that receipt. But um, think about it now. Uh, we before we leave the Home Depot, uh, we've taken out the uh, we've taken out our smartphone. We've opened the Receipt Bank app. We've snapped a picture of it, uh, and then we've submitted it. And so in doing that we've captured an image of that receipt. And so now Receipt Bank's machines get to work looking for things that it should be picking up. So looking for the supplier, looking for the dates, looking for the amount. Uh, this is all going on while basically uh, you were driving to the job or driving to, to wherever the, the customer is. So, so now Receipt Bank's machines are, are busy working recognizing all of that information uh, and getting it ready for your review. And what we're going to do is we're going to get it ready for your review uh, and then we're going to put it into the general ledger. So put it into QuickBooks Online, put it into to zero. Uh, and basically the machine learning then gets to work on, have you, uh, have you used this supplier before? Uh, have our other users used this supplier before? And so that's when the, uh, the, the machine learning really kicks in uh, and that's essentially what machine learning is, is, is looking at how people have handled um, uh, Home Depot in the 10,000 times before, uh, then apply that same learning to that particular receipt ready for your review. And so then the accountant, the bookkeeper is going to have a look at that. Uh, they might have to make some adjustments. So for example, um, there, might, there, there, there might be some, uh, uh, a customer that we need to apply it to, a project that we need to apply it to. But generally once the review's taken place, we can then send all of that data that was on that receipt into the general ledger, as well as the image. So as well as that, that, that not the physical receipt, but the file goes into uh, the general ledger. So at every single transaction level, there's always an image of the associated receipt. So if it's a, a, a JPEG, if it's a, a PDF, uh, if it's an HTML email, that will always sit alongside every single transaction in the general ledger, which I think is, is, uh, is pretty important as well. Oh no, it is because I, I don't know, I don't know if it, what it is, but is it just me or do the receipts just fade? It's almost like they're designed this way. Absolutely. I, I, I think it's a combination of the paper and the ink, but uh, two weeks later, the, those receipts are going to be um, illegible. Yeah, no, and, and you're right. I mean, I, I, I'm forever, like, I'm going to come back from my trip, and I can't even put the stuff in my wallet. So I'm going to be digging it out of my, 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 um, my briefcase, um, my, my, my audit bag, if you will. And I'm going to be pulling the stuff out of there in fistfuls and dumping it on Susan's desk. But she's already got it all. Yes. Right. It, and she's got a clean image because before Eric walked out of the restaurant, dropped it in the puddle, shoved it in his pocket, threw it in the bag, brought it on a plane, you know, it got photoed while it was clean and it is now there forever. Um, so I, this is why for somebody who has these fights and has to bring in forensic accountants to reconstruct stuff and you never, you can't, re, you can never almost reconstruct everything, right? There's cash receipts that you just can't really get to. And there's always going to be a battle with the auditor. What, you know, if you're reconstructing, what, what are we using and how are we coming up with our numbers? So uh, this is why I'm so, you know, I'm, I'm being a tax geek. This is why I'm so psyched about this. Yeah. Um, and Eric, not just, not just for the, um, for the audit side of things and, and the, the um, proof of purchase, but also go, go and have a listen to the, to Dawn's, um, Dawn's podcast around fraud as well. There's a lot of fraud that takes place in terms of expense reimbursement, um, accounts payable. There's an enormous amount of fraud there because there is no source document. So whether it's, uh, about documentation for an IRS audit or whether it's a uh, um, information for uh, f to guard against fraud, having that source document, being able to do it so simply and easily uh, is, a, is, I think, is the really exciting thing for, for small business owners uh, and for the tax professionals and accountants that serve small business owners. Well, no, absolutely. And in fact, I, I tell everyone this story, but um, about why they have to go do the, I, I use the story as far as why you have to go through the walkthrough. But I have this case where they're, they're going to be audited. It's an architecture firm. They converted one of these old stone, you know, brownstones into, a, into an office. So I come see it and I'm walking around. It's clearly for business. And as we were heading out, I noticed there's a door, I assume to the basement. I said, what's down there? They're like, well, that's where we keep all of our filing. I said, well, can I see it? And they're like, well, okay, sure. So we go down 
in fact, I think I, I may have mentioned this on the webinars that you and I did together, Damien. I'll get to that in a little bit. But so I go downstairs and right, you know, they sure enough, they have metal racking. You know, you have the, 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 iron, the those Iron Mountain type white boxes, you know, and right in the middle of the shelf in black lettering written on the side, expenses without receipts. <laughs> and I'm like, what's that? And they're like, well, you know, the guys are in the field. They put in their expenses. They don't have the original receipts. So we just, you know, we make a copy of, of the reimbursement form and keep them there in case we ever have to get them. So the, the lesson I'm like is this is why you do the walkthrough. I'm like, well, you know, do something with that. Don't leave it there. I, I always say get rid of that. But I don't mean to actually shred it. I mean, turn, turn it, it around, around at the very least. take it home, do something with it. Don't leave it here because if I'm the auditor, guess what box I want to look in? That one. Um but with with receipt bank you don't have that issue so just let me ask you what is the what is the feedback you're here i mean i look at i follow you guys on social media right and, and so i see all the really cool you know things people are saying what is the feedback that you're getting i i think the feedback from from users is its simplicity um is the ability to take a photo uh, to and, and obviously a photo is one way in which we can get information into the system because you can scan and upload, you can forward an email, you can actually attach Receipt Bank to uh, more than 2,000 suppliers and, and Receipt Bank will go and automatically get the bill. So it'll go and get the AT&T bill, go and get the Amazon receipt. So um, the simplicity in, in getting information into the system, I think that's one of the, the key highlights of the feedback we get. Uh, so easy to snap a picture, as you said, before you've left the restaurant, before we've left Home Depot, uh, and then it's done. It's taken care of. Um, forward an email directly into the system. So great from a, uh, the end user standpoint. So maybe some of the employees that are out in the field, very positive feedback there. And then the tax professionals, they tell us that they love everything now is in one central location. So before it used to be some in bankers boxes, some in email inbox, uh, some just not even there, but now everything is in one central location for all of the users uh, and the, the, the tax professional, the accountant, the bookkeeping team, the owner, they can access it from anywhere. Again, previously we had to be in the office, uh, in the filing room, in the filing cabinet looking for this information. Whereas now I can see that information wherever I am. Um, Eric, you're on the road a lot. I'm on the road a lot. A lot of business owners, they're out in the field. Uh, making the sales, etc. So having access to this information um, wherever and whenever is really critical because previously all of that used to happen on, on the Saturdays and Sundays when, when you got back off the road or, or uh, back to the office. Uh, that was the only time that you could do these administrative functions. So now um, our, our, our users tell us that they love this ability that all of this is happening in the background and they can come in anywhere, anytime and review it. I know when I was working in the accounting firm, I used to review it on the plane. Um, as I was flying back from, from wherever, you could log in, review, uh, review your team members' expenses, review the client file, send whatever we needed over to the, uh, the general ledger. If there were some queries, send a particular message, Eric, what's this dinner at Craft Steak for? Who were the, who were the, uh, who were the clients? All of that can happen now. Um, in real time. Uh, and so I think that's some of the, the, the feedback, the simplicity uh, being the simplicity with which we get information in. Uh, but then second, just having access uh, to this one central location for all of this information, which is accessible anywhere, anytime. I think that's the, some of the key messages we hear. You know, and, and, and I, um, and I agree it, it is, it's on my phone. Um, and when I, when I tried explaining it to my partners, they were kind of like, all right, now what do I have to do? I'm like, download it susan's got the link and it, it really is it is a simplicity now you guys do a lot in in the education space i i, I know that i knew it before but you want just if you're listening to this we just did a three-part series with receipt bank on just this damien right on documentation dealing with an audit reconstructing documents um correct me that's all still up and available right on demand yeah, that's absolutely available on demand and we can share the link uh, in uh, in the description here, but th yep. that's all available on demand. So you can go on and you can listen on, on the weekends, download the slides. Uh, and, and even if you need to email us questions, we'll make sure we get those over to Eric as well. 
Yep. No, absolutely. I will get that link in there uh, for that. You guys, I, and I know we've met, I, I know you're going to be at Scaling New Heights. You're going to be at NATP. Uh, for anyone listening to this who would love to have the Eric Green experience where I can come and talk to you and check it out, the booth, the big orange booth, whatever, um, where, where are you guys also going to be aside from Scaling New Heights? So if you're listening to this, Scaling New Heights will be in Salt Lake City uh, in, I think, two and a half weeks. Um, in, you know, it, it's going to be June, I think it starts June 16th. Um, I will be there presenting along with Don Brolin. I know Damien, you guys are going to be there. Um, I had Joe Woodard, in fact, on the podcast talking about the transformative advisor and what does that mean and uh, embracing uh, artificial intelligence and the trans transformation that we're seeing the, the industry go through. Then we're also going to be in Chicago together, right? Late yep. July. Um, uh, July 22nd, I believe, I'm actually speaking um, uh, in Chicago. Where else are you guys going to be? Uh, so we're always at QuickBooks Connect. Um, Latino yep. Tax Pro is uh, that uh, Tax Fest is something that we typically attend. Um, but Latino, ta and then uh, a lot of the, the uh, tax, uh, tax and accounting shows. So in Los Angeles, New York, Toronto as well, we'll be up in Canada for that. Um, and they're in uh, June, July, and August, I believe. So they're the main ones over the summer. So I think the Latino Tax Pro, the NATP uh, conference in Chicago, and then the accounting and business shows that are in uh, Los Angeles, New York, and Toronto. Yep. That'll be where we are. But we have a full, uh, a full program online as well, Eric. So we yep. do a whole host of webinars on, on things like pricing, uh, workflow, process, workflow and process engineering, uh, marketing, talking to your clients about this, uh, about these types of tools, uh, bookkeeping automation. They're some of the topics that we do a, a whole host of webinars on as well. No, absolutely. So if you're listening, NATP will be in Chicago the week of July 21st. The following week is Latino Tax Pros in, uh, at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Uh, we do a lot. I do a lot with the Latino tax pros um, with Carlos and Tony, and um, it's a, it's a it's really a, a great organization. Also, as you mentioned, QuickBooks Connect will be, I think, in November, as yep. it always is. Um, uh, so, no, definitely, if you're going to any of the shows, go check out Receipt Bank. Go online and check out Receipt Bank. Click on the link. You can watch the three videos we did on demand. Um, we will definitely be doing more. In fact, we were talking before we began recording this podcast on doing another several installments of that. The other thing I do want to tell you, if you're listening, we're going to do some Facebook live events uh, from Scaling New Heights and from Chicago. And uh, so a couple things. If you're going to Scaling New Heights or to the NATP um, conference in Chicago, please come up, say hello to me, go introduce yourself to Damien, check out Receipt Bank. We will be doing some Facebook live events from both of those conferences. So you can look for that. And again, I will put this stuff in the description below. So you can go check out the webinar series, go check out Receipt Bank. Um, so, but Damien, how else can people connect with you? you I, I know you guys are all on there on social media, but any particular platform or are you everywhere? Uh, we're, we're pretty much everywhere, but I, th I think we're popular on Twitter, uh, also on Instagram and Facebook. So check us out, uh, Receipt Bank, you'll be able to find us. Um, and you can search for me as well, Damien Greathead. Uh, there's not too many Damien Greatheads in the world, so you'll be able to find me easily enough. And typically I've got a, a big orange uh, banner behind me as well. So uh, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram is probably where we're most uh, most active. And actually, if if uh, those Facebook Live events we've got coming up, Eric, we've got a whole host of questions uh, that we didn't get to during our webinar series. So uh, that promises to be uh, uh, an information-packed session as well. I think we're definitely going to have to go through those. And so, um, you know, so Damien, listen, you know, we're definitely going to do the Facebook Live things. I mean, if we're going to be there together, we might as well make the most of it. Absolutely. Right? But, but, you know, thank you for doing this. Uh, but before, uh, I know you got to cut out. In fact, I got to cut out because I'm actually preparing if all things for <laughs> scaling new heights. They're, they're all over me about my materials. Um, any final thoughts for our listeners when it comes to bulletproofing um, their, their own returns, by the way, as well as their clients? Yeah, I, I, Eric, thank you very much for, for having me. Look forward to seeing you in Salt Lake City. But folks, I, I think the key thing is keep it simple. Um, show your clients how to use these apps. And if it is as simple as taking a photo, as long as your, photo, as long as your clients can take a photo of their pet, their lunch, their vacation, 
uh, they can keep themselves out of trouble with the IRS, they can help guard themselves uh, against fraud. Uh, and I think it's the tax professionals, accountants and bookkeepers, it's their responsibility to be talking to their clients about simple tools like Receipt Bank uh, that will save them a whole host of time and also keep them out of uh, keep them out of a lot of trouble. So that would be my keep it simple. But for the tax pros, uh, let's get out and talk to our clients about these tools that will really help uh, help improve their businesses. Well said. And uh, remember, you'll be telling your clients this if you're doing representation after you've already made all the money helping them get through the audit that had they had Receipt Bank would have gone much better. Yes, so, yes. Um, so with that, no, Damien, thank you for joining us. Thank everybody for listening. I will put, go check out the description below the link to the webinars and the link to go check out uh, Receipt Bank. And um, otherwise, if you're at Scaling New Heights, NATP in Chicago, uh, I will be at AICPA next week. Please come up, say hello, love to see you, and also look for those Facebook Live events. So uh, with that, Damien, thank you for doing this, and um, we'll be doing the, we're going to be doing more webinars. So we'll, we'll definitely get the word out, and we'll have you back when we launch those because uh, there's a lot of great stuff there. Fantastic. Eric, thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.